Hey guys, this is Spencer from Pixel and Bracket, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at the new Essentials workspace in Adobe Illustrator 2018. So here we are, we've got a new document open, and I'm currently in the new Essentials workspace. That you can access uh, if it's not already set up for you, or if you're in a different workspace and want to check it out, you can go to Window, down to Workspace, and then select Essentials. Yes, the Essentials Classic workspace is still available, however, if you want to stay up to date with, with you know, the latest, newest thing, it's the new Essentials Workspace. And quite frankly, if you're an educator or you're um, just starting out, I think the Essentials Workspace has a lot of features that are quickly available to you and are contextual uh, to whatever it is you're working on. So I think it's to stay up to date with the latest uh, releases and things like that is a very good idea in my opinion. However, I will recommend a few changes to it. Uh, let's see. So I've got a new document open. I do not have anything selected. That does matter, right? And I've got this properties panel opened up over here. And then it also has layers and libraries just as defaults. But you can always change that and add in your own panels up here and kind of mix and match everything together. But this properties panel is what we're going to look at first because this is a replacement for all the stuff that used to be up top. That's probably the first thing you notice if you're used to using Illustrator. There's nothing up top anymore. There's no tools, no panels, no adjustments, properties. Where'd they all go? Oh, they're all over here to the right. Or they're just waiting for you to select something so that they'll pop up to the right because this is a contextual panel. This properties panel does not stay the same. It changes depending on what you have selected. So a quick rundown of what we have here. You've got the document. Um, set up here so you can change the units uh, which was previously available in only document setup or over in the preferences. Uh, you can also select which artboard is active. You can click edit artboards. As soon as you click edit artboards, once again, remember contextual, all my artboard properties pop up over here as well. I can name it, uh, use presets. I can select whether or not to move the artwork with my artboard. Sometimes you'll want to do that. Sometimes you'll be annoyed by it. So it's good that you have the option to turn it off. You'll also have quick actions here. Uh, depending on what you have selected, the quick actions can open up the artboard options and then you have lots more options to adjust your artboard. Now the cool thing here, one thing uh, to note on the artboards is if I hold option, duplicate this guy over. Now I have this guy selected. I can now select multiple artboards. So if I hold shift, I can actually select both the artboards and once again, contextual, now I can align them over here. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and get rid of that artboard and we'll go back to the single artboard and we'll just exit out of that artboard editing mode. Hey guys, look at that. We found a bug in this tutorial. So I am clicking exit and it's not exiting. I could just select the uh, selection tool and it will exit. Interesting little bug. All right, so moving on, uh, you've got rulers and grids, so you can quickly show or hide the rulers. That's also Command R. You can show the grid, show the transparency grid really fast or not. Boy, we're running into bugs. Uh, so yeah, oh, there we go. So transparency grid, and then you can also, uh, if I have some guides out here, right? These guides, when they are selected, have their own contextual things over here. You can change some of the the fills and strokes on them, maybe. Um, but also you can hide them quickly if you don't have them if you don't have anything selected the guides things guides uh, section pops up you can hide them lock them or hide smart guides as well which is a little bit different than these guys smart guides are anything that pops up in that really uh, highlighted pink color I do think that this guides panel here should show up if you have some guides selected like that guides panel should still be there allowing you to uh, you know show hide lock all that kind of stuff but it does not currently, so there are some things that could be improved, but that's okay. This is a new feature. It's kind of like, you know, imagine it being in beta or something. Uh, we already ran into one little bug. All right, so snap options, we can snap to uh, point, we can snap to grid, snap to pixel. All of those used to be available up in the view dropdown, just way down at the bottom. Um, now they're readily available out here for you to quickly select. Uh, then you have some preferences and one thing that's cool here is I used to have to get to the transform panel to scale corners or scale strokes and effects. Now all you have to do is check these boxes over here. When you uh, Once again, when you don't have anything else selected, this is just your document properties, 
scale corners, scale strokes and effects. Those are available over here. Use preview bounds. And then also quick actions for your document is to take you straight to document setup. Previously, you know, you're having to drop down into the file or edit menu. Um, I think it was in file to get to this. And then from here, you can still like edit artboards and things like that. Okay, exit worked on that, so I'm not sure if that was a bug earlier or if it's just a manner of the different things that I did. Maybe I encountered that bug, but that's okay. Um, that exit does work sometimes. It's not a complete bug, just depends on whatever the actions were that I took. You can also select preferences. That opens up the preferences panel really quickly so that you can go down and just I mean, there's sometimes things in here that you want to change. Sometimes there's not. But yeah, it's a quick access to the preferences panel, which normally is underneath on a Mac underneath Illustrator and then preferences. All right. So that's really quick. So let's say we grab a shape. OK, we're going to draw a rectangle on our space. Now that I have it drawn, notice how all the properties change. A lot of that stuff's not there. I have appearance stuff now, so I can click the fill and I can select red for this. I can edit the stroke if I wanted to. I can change the opacity. I can also apply effects. One little thing that we found with applying effects, like if I apply a free distort, for instance, and I just grab one of these corners and I distort this shape. Uh, this is a lot. Okay, there we go. Got the corner. Okay, I'm going to hit OK. Now it's distorted and that effect is applied. Currently, there's no real good way of hiding that effect from this panel. What I need to do is click these little uh, appearance panel options. It's going to open up the old appearance panel. And where what I can do here is actually turn off the visibility of the effect or just turn the effect. Uh, or, well, yes, that's turning the effect on and off. I can also double click this to edit the effect. But basically, that's the only way I can really turn the effect on and off at will is sort of in this old appearance panel. So I do think that there should just be a little eyeball out here that I can turn it on and off with. But uh, for now, once again, this is sort of like a little beta, you know, a little beta thing. I'm sure it'll get better over time. Uh, quick actions. We can set an offset path. I can preview that and see what happens. Uh, whoops. We can expand the shape, right? So I can just click. Previously, that was in object expand appearance or expand. Now I can just hit expand. Boom. The shape's expanded. That is going to change on a lot of my tutorials for sure. Um, you can arrange things, which basically is bring to front, send to back, things like that. Um, you can align it to the pixel grid, and you can recolor your artwork, which is a panel that deserves a tutorial in and of itself. This guy is super powerful, um, especially when maybe you forgot to, to set global swatches and things like that. But recoloring, this recolor artwork panel is very useful in Illustrator. So that's, and they know that. That's why they put it out here as a quick action. You can also quickly flip along the horizontal axis. Let's try to select this again and see if that actually works. Uh, so it doesn't work because that effect is applied, but let's say, let's go back here. We're just gonna not have that effect applied and we're gonna select this corner and we're gonna uh, just round that one corner. Uh, if we use our, now that the, I've actually rounded the shape, had I expanded that shape before with the effect not applied, uh, I would have been able to flip it. But with the effect applied, I'm only flipping the base shape, which was a square, which means I'm not actually flipping anything, if that makes any sense. But now that I've rounded one of these corners and I hit this little uh, flip along the horizontal axis that flips it left and right, I can also flip it up and down. These are really quick options, really awesome options that are available at the click of a button. Usually these are under like object transform. You go to reflect and then it's like, okay, where do I want to reflect? Uh, yeah, horizontal. And then I hit okay. And then I can reflect that. And I had a corner selected. That's why that was weird. But anyway, that's the kind of things you would have to do before. And you can still access, I think, uh, yeah, under more options, there's some more transform options and things. But really cool that you can just click on these and flip your shapes that fast. That is pretty awesome. Um, so that's pretty much it for the uh, shape stuff. Uh, let's look at type. So we're going to grab the type tool. We're going to just open up a little text box here. It just fills it in with a ton of text. But look at what happens over here on the right. Once again, contextual, right? This is like characters uh, properties. So you still have your transform stuff. You still have your appearance stuff. And then you have these character panels over here where I can just change the font super quick. I can change the font size. And uh, let's see here. I know there's some things I can do. If I hold shift and hit the up arrow key, I can quickly change the font size to be something a little bit more readable for you guys. Um, we can also scroll down here. We've got paragraph style, uh, paragraph um, alignment here so I can align to center 
find a, you know, just whatever, justify left, all that kind of stuff. So uh, all these are super quickly available. And once again, these little three dots, the little ellipses always opens up a few more options if you're looking for them. Like I can do all caps and things like that. Um, also in the paragraph styles, I can um, indent and hyphenate and all those sort of things. I always hate, hy I turn that off almost every time. Hate hyphens. Anyway, uh, and then this one's pretty cool. This is definitely worth its own tutorial. When you have any type selected, you can quickly create outlines that fast just by clicking on that little button, which is probably a lot easier for people that don't have Shift Command O or Shift Control O on a PC uh, memorized. Uh, once again, the arrangement panel, bring to front, send to back, all that good stuff. Wow. A lot of things. So this is contextual, right? This changes depending on what you have selected. Even when you're inside edit artboards, it changes. That's so cool. Now there's a few things that we can grumble about, like uh, you know, corner radius doesn't show up over here, which used to show up up top. Um, alignment. So if I wanted to, let's say I have this guy offset, and I wanted to align him to the artboard, right? I want to center him to this artboard. Where is it? It's not over here. There should be in a little a little alignment panel and it should be already set to be aligned to artboard because I have nothing but one object selected. Well, it's not over here. So one of the things, one of the changes that I might want to do is go up to window, select align. Now my little old alignment panel pops up. I'm going to grab this panel. I'm going to attach him just below the properties panel. This is probably how I'm going to roll with my workspace. I align things, whoops, and I hit my microphone. I align things a lot, right? So I want this alignment panel open no matter what, even if I just have one object selected. Yes, when you have two objects selected, the alignment panel does pop up. If I scroll down on the properties panel here, check it out, two objects, alignment panel pops up. And now I can select, oh, align to selection, key object, artboard. Well, what if I want to align one object to the artboard? I need to pull up my alignment panel. So I'm just going to keep it down here, right? That's going to be me. That's going to be my own personal workspace. You guys can edit your workspaces as needed as well. But what I can do now is change my options to align to artboard, and I can click my center buttons, and it's going to align that to the center of the artboard. Um, I need that feature. I'm going to keep it down there. So that's one of the ways that I will edit this until maybe they, they add that in. So we'll see. One last thing, one last thing. So what Adobe is really doing is they're trying to reveal a bunch of features that Illustrator already has that people don't know about, right? That's why we create these tutorials. There's some things that you guys maybe don't know about, especially beginners. They don't know that there's things hidden in here. Heck, I didn't even know that you could double click on tools until I saw a tutorial by Dansky that you can double click on tools and it opens up tool options. Had no clue, nobody ever told me that. So how are you ever gonna encounter it? Well. That's actually specifically on that note, if I have this selected, and let's say I grab the eyedropper tool. Take a look at the properties panel over here, right? Keep your eyes in the upper right hand corner. I'm just gonna click the eyedropper tool over here and look in the upper right, boom. Tool options, a little tool options button pops up. It's kind of like inconspicuous up there in the corner, but when I click it, it gives me all the options for that eyedropper tool. Now, how do I ever get to this panel before? Well, I can double click on the eyedropper tool to get to that panel before. But now they're trying to reveal some of that stuff to us in the properties panel. You know, if I have the uh, rotate tool selected, tool options. So anytime that there's extra options for said tool, it's gonna pop up. So, you know, there's some that don't like the selection tool, like there's no tool options up there. Um, you know, the type tool doesn't have any. Line segment tool does. Oh, really? Didn't know that. Tool options. Line segment tool options, boom, right there. So I think that overall, they're, they're, this is a good thing, right? This is a good thing. Yes, change is like hard to, uh, you know, ch change is always hard, right? Change is difficult, change is like, oh no, I'm used to everything being up top. Why is it over on the right now? This is super frustrating. It's actually better, okay? It's gonna be okay. This thing is a good thing. They're trying to reveal all of these features, make them easy. They're trying to make it easier, okay? And that's a good thing. Yes, there's still some things that are missing, like I'm gonna add this alignment panel down here, but the good thing, the good thing is, I, I've said good like 15 times. The good thing is, you can arrange this however you want, but this feature is now available to you, right? So. I think that's really cool. I think the fact that it's contextual is really cool. I think the fact that they are revealing a lot of sort of hidden features here in Illustrator is really cool. Um, 
yeah, so that's that's really what I want what I wanted to cover in this tutorial is all of the new things that I kind of encountered and have learned with this properties panel. I'm going to start using it. I'm going to get better at it. I'll create some tutorials on it so you guys know like how to use it, how to utilize it. Um, and as as Illustrator updates and things get updated, they're going to get feedback from from guys like us and they're going to learn like, okay, they really, really like the alignment panel down there. Like, why didn't we put it in? Or, or they really want uh, a way to turn off effects in, in the panel. Oh, that's really easy. Okay. And then it's going to get added in. So this is probably just a you know, in, in, in its infancy right now. And that's okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> whoo, that was a ton of talking. Uh, I hope you guys learned something in this tutorial. I hope you guys appreciate this new panel. Um, you can always go back to the classic one, but uh, I wouldn't, you know, I would get used to this new way because eventually the classic ways aren't going to be available anymore or they won't be supported anymore. And the new ways are going to be the new ways forward and it's going to be the new ways that anybody that's new that encounters this program is going to learn it like this so you should know it like this um, and then utilize it in whatever way works for you like this video if you like this video thanks for watching you guys subscribe for more tips and tutorials and i'll see you next time